Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna talk about how to play jazz, which is a huge, huge question with quite a few answers. Now, this video is not gonna enlighten you, but it will give you 15 tools to really work on a song, on a jazz song, and we're gonna break it down together. Got my good buddy Gabe Gonzalez here with us again. Again. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's always Keep coming back. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a great song by Miles Davis. This one is called Solar. It's a simple song, and we're gonna do these 15 devices and thought processes, and we'll basically walk you guys through how we think about it and what are the ideas of how to really nail it. And of course, it's a process. Some of these exercises take some time to internalize, so it's not like you can watch the video one time and do it, but I think for me as a guitar player, I really always try to understand what are the elements that I need to, to know in order to nail something. And I think after many years of practicing and trying different things, I feel these 15 points are really, really important. And I feel some of the later points as well are super important to internalize. So if you're serious about guitar and music, I would be inclined to check it out. All right, let's do it. Amen. All right, so we're gonna take the song Solar. And the first thing that I didn't understand when I started studying music and guitar and jazz is that the melody is like a lighthouse that really leads us. Um, the melody really gives us a lot of information about the song, because the melody is the song, and also the melody gives us the harmonic information as well. So we basically can't really get lost, and that's something that I was always afraid when I was, you know, studying and you know, starting to play jazz and studying a new school and all that stuff, I was always really nervous at gigs in the beginning to get lost. You know, I was like, oh, I don't want to get lost, I don't want to, you know, and that tension really resolved when I understood, it's like, oh, I'm playing a song, mm -hmm. the melody, and that is a very, very strong thing. So what we're going to do right now is just like listen deeply to the melody. Let's do it. <laughs> trying to feel the tension and how it works against the chord C7 and then that 3 a lot of tension there to the 3 of F minor again 3 no surprises 3 another 3 and then the scale going up Sometimes what I would do is even just have an anchor point of just one note. And I'm really trying to listen to the tension against the center. So really feeling. to hear the melody in a very simple and truthful way mm -hmm. and I think for me it took again a long time to understand that it's super important so that's on a technical kind of side to like dive into the melody but also on the guitar let's just play a few times in different areas mm -hmm. can start here maybe just change the areas completely trying to do things that are not comfortable and, and basically things that kind of force us to hear the melody. Two, chords and functions. So again, 
remembering me in high school learning songs, I just memorized the song. I just memorized the chords, C minor, G minor, C7. But I didn't really understand what's happening there. And therefore, I didn't hear it as much and couldn't play it in different keys. Or maybe could, but very slowly. So what I do now when I learn a song, I try to understand and try to make sure that I hear it as much as possible. And that always is a process. So I'll ask myself, okay, what, what key are we in? Okay, we're in C minor. And then we're playing a 2-5 to the 4. Okay, so we're going to the 4, but 4 major. Surprise, very cool. 2-5 to the 3, E flat, no worries. Oh, 2-5 to the flat 2, amazing. And then back. So the journey is, is more clear to me. So if you ask me to play this song in G minor or in any key, it's pretty easy because I understand the functions. Mm -hmm. So when you learn a song, learn the functions. Three. So we're going to go over different points that will challenge us. And that's a good thing, I hope. So this one is still pretty simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play two bars of the melody and then two bars of solo. It's not hard to do, but it means that you need to know the melody and be comfortable with that. One, two, three, five. <laughs> two bars and then playing lines and I'm flexible enough with the melody and I spend enough time learning the melody so I can find in different areas so I don't need to always jump here I can start in different different areas and, and figure out the melody so it's a very kind of natural thing but again it didn't happen out of nowhere it was a lot of work so don't be bothered if you can't do it right now start this process of understanding what's happening tag it know the notes that you're playing so it's not just fingerings because yeah with guitar we can just <laughs> but that's not real four triads so i'm a very big fan of triads and i believe in triads i believe that you know when we're playing this style of music we want to be able to hear and articulate the centers in a clear way so it's not just scales but really is the chord that we're dealing with so we can play those shapes and articulate the sound so it's like almost it's almost like geographical points or coordinates or something like that because we're basically saying like oh this is where we are song and of course the more information we have we can start tweaking it and messing around with it and that's really cool to create all these upper structures and all these cool things but the first step is really hearing the triads so for that what we're gonna do is just play one three five or the song three, four. easy and it sometimes informs us what we need to do because you're like you're playing something you're playing an idea and all of a sudden you're here and maybe you don't see G minor as clearly or you don't see C major as clearly and I think by doing these simple exercises right it just like really highlights what we need to do I'm gonna try but now I'm gonna add one more layer of difficulty I'm gonna stay in one area so I'm gonna just kind of play everything around here, just this area of the guitar. So I'm not gonna jump, so if I have C minor, I'm not gonna do like, I'm gonna basically do like, like saying this zone-ish. So by limiting myself, I'm forcing myself to see and to hear it in a certain area. Two, three, So what I did also 
which was another layer of difficulty, is basically playing the same area but changing direction whenever I reach my top limit. So if I decided this is my zone, like five to eight or four to eight, nine depends. So whenever I have the note A, which maybe it's A or A flat, is the lowest note that I have, then I switch direction. So I start ascending and then when I get to C, I again switch directions again. So I'm not only saying like, okay, I'm in one area, but I'm not just randomly saying like, okay, C minor, then G minor, C. It's not that, it's really like one and two and three and four and G minor and two and three and four and C and two and three. And you can start in different areas. The point is really just that we want when we're soloing to have that ability to just like do whatever we hear and not be controlled by our fingers or our limitations of not hearing something or not seeing something. So this is a, a good process to just try and do it better. It's really hard. It takes some time. And I mean, you, you know, I mean, <laughs> right? Tries are, are like, it's a process. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But it's really worth it. I really feel it's, it's really an eye and ear opener. So agree five zoom out scale centers so basically what i mean by that is you know we can talk very specific about the tries but also we can zoom out and say like okay what scales are we actually playing so what scale are we playing c minor yeah f major yeah e flat major yeah, yeah. d flat major yeah c Minor. Yeah, back, exactly. Four. C minor to basically F. I'm gonna stay in this area though. Same idea. E flat. Just thinking the center. major scale the same notes on G minor I'm getting the Dorian I'm, I'm very aware of that of course and of course we're thinking about mixoli on, on the C it's the same thing it's just the same note so the idea is that we want to see the framework in a clear way and that's also not that easy um, just like playing it in one area and shifting the keys and scales in time you know takes a little bit of work and if you can't do it right now it's totally fine just slow it down to a place that you can do it and of course later on we can do some cool stuff with that as well just like saying like oh okay on the c7 i want to play the diminished or or augmented or whole tone scale whatever you want to call it but you know just there are many options and many sounds and of course we can add chromatic it's it's totally great but we also want to see like the simple options so when we're playing and improvising like it's kind of like little dots of light that we see like the framework mm. and i think a lot of times people work on different exercises but they work on them kind of outside of music not in context a little bit like, like they just work on triads but not on a song or they'll work on scales but not on a song so it's like a little bit um not wasteful, but you know, we want to connect everything to the music as much as possible. So I feel in that sense, it's really great to do these exercises, They're super clear, but also very musical because you, you hear the scale and how beautiful it, the F major fits on that chord. And later on, you can say, well, on that F major, you want to hear that C major or, you know, basically the, the, the Lydian sound with a sharp four. So there are many options. Cool. Six. Now we're gonna solo only with one, three, five. So the restriction is basically triads only. The rhythm is open, so you can do it every one rhythmically, but just one, three, five.
nothing crazy, you know, it's not a solo of our lifetime, but we use the tries and ideas to try and hear the song and create something with that. So again, with these restrictions, we grow. Seven. So this one is one, three, five in one area, but we're gonna do it only in half notes. So if you felt the exercise before was way too much, this one is just right. You can push the tempo later, but right now what we're gonna do is basically play the one, three, five in one area of the guitar, but only half notes. And we're trying to make nice choices. So it's mm -hmm. not random, like we kind of like try to still make some music with it, but restriction is half notes. Cool. really really important so we're gonna do it again only in one area Four. So now we're starting to take those one, three, fives and adding some colors to the mix. You got it. Sometimes we feel we know a song, but we are a little restricted because we don't see the scales, we don't see the tritone, we don't see different things. And then this exercise kind of forces us to play a stream of eight notes. It doesn't have to be unstoppable, but a lot of eight notes. If you're not comfortable in this tempo, bring it to a place that is comfortable and practice that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 
right, so just playing kind of longer lines that are, you know, not necessarily unstoppable, but just this kind of flow of eight notes. Eleven. <laughs> now we're gonna use pentatonic and space. So instead of trying to do all these things of like thinking about a lot of chords, we're gonna zoom out and do less and use only pentatonics. <laughs> using these ideas that are more, yeah, more pentatonic. And it's kind of cool. I use different pentatonics and different options. The idea is just trying to see it in different ways. It's like the music is this huge thing and we're just highlighting it from different areas and kind of studying it in different places to understand and try to access more of that. Twelve. <laughs> triplets. The same idea that we did with eight notes, only triplets. Two, three, four. <laughs> trying to articulate the changes but again because there is this rush of information we you know we kind of see what we don't see or don't hear you know so it's like it's kind of both I want to make sure that I can shift between the chords that I, I can find this G minor or diminish whatever I'm hearing and if I'm not I can just stop I can pause recenter myself and see like oh I actually don't see you know this diminished scale in this area of the guitar great find now let's practice in this air of the guitar and go back to the lab a little bit and then take it back to the music mm. 13 <laughs> so this one is chord melody it's either taking the actual melody and harmonizing it with chords or actually playing lines with chords let's do it a little slower Without trying, you will never kind of be able to be comfortable with that. And it's a never ending process. So I would just start really slow, maybe even just on the first four bars, like literally. That was just inversions of C minor, right? But I can find a little melody. like a lot once you start messing around you find some shapes and some inversion that are comfortable you can find some ideas but I think like anything you want to start the process 14 colors in that sense 
I would take the song and play whatever notes you wish and just treat it as colors. So really trying to map and tag the colors. Let's try it. centers of sound just see and then G and then C right and it's all these centers it's the song but it's basically the same exercise of these centers of color that shift and we can just create those 15 voice leading this is a really cool one that I love doing basically you want to take consonants thirds, minor and major, and sixth, and then move through the song with those. And it makes us kind of hear it stronger and be able to articulate the song better, I feel. So I would literally take this very slowly, like... exercise to explore it more thank you so much for listening and taking the time to check it out i feel working on these things is always hard how do you feel challenged <laughs> right it's always it's always challenging and i mean gabe is an amazing guitar player and i mean yeah this is all hard stuff and we all kind of stumble with this it's not easy and it's a process so i mean these are just 15 ideas i'd love to hear what you guys think and if you have more ideas please Drop them in the comment. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace. Take care.